I picked up this nice little fluke beater here. It's a it's a 8010A uh, the other day for well, next to nothing. I think it was $35 or something like that Canadian. Uh, but uh, I, I went through all the calibration of it. I tested it all out of the AC ranges, DC ranges, ohms and so forth. And I found out that on the DC range, it's it's a little bit off. It's, uh, it, as you can see here, the, the signal is showing 30 volts and the fluke is showing 30.6 volts. Now I know these, it could be a hell of a lot better than that. I mean, a lot of people wouldn't mind it being the way it is, but, um, and, and it's, it's fairly easy to actually uh, calibrate these on the DC side. So we're going to take it apart. We're going to fix this problem here and then we'll check out um, the, the calibration on, on the DC ranges. And since that affects also uh, DC current ranges and the ohms, we'll check those out too. Um, so, well, let's, let's take it apart. These old flukes are extremely easy to get into. There's only a single screw on the back here. It looks like this one's been into before because it's normally a, a calibration sticker over the back of this. But anyway, let's, let's get in here. That screw gets removed. And then the case just slides right off like that. That out of the way. And uh, there's the circuit board. It's upside down, as you can see, when the meter's right side up. Um, and this right here is the is the little potentiometer that we have to use to to uh, calibrate the DC. Now, the AC calibration is done um, these two pots here and these two capacitors here. So the two pots are for the low frequency AC and the two capacitors here for the high frequency AC and it's um, it's it's a real actually a real pain to do that calibration because uh, these like these two pots are interdependent these two capacitors are interdependent so once you change one you have to go back and change the other so it's back and forth so I'm really glad that the uh, that the AC tested out just fine on this but uh, let's get this back up all right we're back here so I'm just going to reach back here and uh, rotate that pot until the voltages are a better match. Okay, that looks a lot better. Let's try some other voltages here. good right now so that's well within the precision of the meter that's beautiful let's try um, something much smaller That's acceptable. That is really good. So, okay, let's. I'm gonna put the cover back on it, and uh, we'll we'll put it through some more little tests. We'll test out the ohms and the and the current and. So I'm going to use this uh, decade resistance box here to, to check out the, the meters. Um, this is really pretty accurate. It, uh, it's made up with 0.5% uh, metal film resistors. So it, 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 I've tested that to be pretty good. And we'll compare it, of course, to the, to the Siglent um, five half digit meter here. So let's start off, we'll put in 10 ohms. That's pretty good. Now let's see what we get from the fluke. Okay. 
right on. So let's put uh, let's, let's add 100 ohms to that, see what happens. That is bang on. And let's go off the scale here. We'll add uh, 1,000 ohms in here. That's pretty good. Let's see, let's compare that because we notice a small amount of error here. Let's compare that to the signal. Oh, that's right on within the precision of the meter. Okay, so here we are. We're at 14.9. 95 96 milliamps um, on both of them so we're we're well within the the margin of error here so I'm, I'm happy with this I mean this is uh we're less than one percent or less than one tenth of one percent out um, so that that's that's very good I mean we can uh, let's let's try a little bit more current here we've gone past There we go, 33, yeah, right on. Let's try a lot less. See how low, down low we can go. Perfect match, yep. Yeah. Oh, I'm very happy with that. So that's it. It's a very simple little process there to, to do the, the DC calibration on this little fluke meter.